Hey everyone, Dev with Crime Hive, and in this true crime video, we're talking about the Sydney Louf case. And specifically, the reason I'm bringing this up is you're looking at a picture right here of Bailey Boswell, and she was recently convicted of the murder of Sydney Louf. Now, right here, this man, Aubrey Trell, was also convicted of her murder. They both worked together, as we'll see because I do have the arrest affidavit here, the probable cause affidavit. And if you're not familiar with this case, we'll just go through a quick synopsis. It's actually not very long through this. And then I wanna hop over to this article here to show you some of the pictures involved in the trial. And uh, right here, you're looking at a picture of Boswell here, her reaction when she was found guilty of first degree murder. And a pretty vicious case. It's, it's a very disturbing case. And the evidence, as you'll see here in this article, was overwhelming. So we're gonna talk about, if, again, if you're not familiar, just how this came about and, and why she's looking at potentially a, a death, uh, you know, looking at death. I mean, she's she could be the first woman in Nebraska history to, to be facing the death penalty. So pretty, uh, pretty, it's pretty severe here. So again, I'll go back to the, to the affidavit here. So this really starts on, a, with a phone call on the 15th, on the 15th of November, this case really begins. That's when we learn the incident really happens. But on November 16th, 2017, the Lincoln Police Department get a phone call of a missing person, ended up being Sydney Loof, and she was reported missing. Her coworker saw her leave her job on the, on the 15th, on the evening of the 15th, 2017, failed to show up the next day. Uh, her mother, Susan Loof, reports her missing. And, and it begins this missing person case. So during the investigation, police learn that Bailey Boswell had been in the company of Sydney. So they start to piece this together and they learn that Bailey was, or, or had Sydney over at her apartment on the 15th of November. So and this all takes place in, in Wilbur County area and and then they talk about how she lived with Aubrey Trail, who we'll find out comes into play in this case. So during the investigation, they 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 learned from phone from phone records that that Sydney Lou's cell phone was at the tower near the the apartment where where uh, where Bailey lived. So about eight thirty one p.m. And then what's interesting is there's no more activity on her cell phone from there. So police have enough information to get a search warrant at this point and they they serve the search warrant in the basement apartment where Bailey and Aubrey live and so they as they as they as they're doing the search warrant the landlord who lives upstairs reports this strong odor of bleach okay and and it's interesting that it, and, and the reason I'm, I want to mention this here the strong odor of bleach there's so many cases involving bleach chlorine you know, I'm doing uh, videos on the Suzanne Morphew case. And if you're familiar with, with that case, Barry Morphew, you know, police had mentioned a strong odor of chlorine or bleach in in the home. And then also in the hotel that, he, that Barry Morphew stayed at. So again, Barry's not a suspect. It's just interesting when you see this connection of bleach, a strong odor of bleach. And this is coming from police and from the landlord who who noticed this strong odor. So what what happens is police start looking at the walls of the apartment. They see that it looked like it had been wiped down as an effort to clean it. The fans were actually running. Uh, police actually took pictures of the apartment and 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 the fan was running at the time that they were serving the search warrant. So it was it was pretty suspicious from the beginning and and then we learn that that uh, you know Boswell and Trail were were gone. They apparently had, had left and they were on the run. They were traveling through, you know, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, and then finally on November 30th of 2017, they were located at a hotel in Missouri. So, they were detained and then uh they they go on to uh, get more more information in this case after they were detained. And so what we start to learn from there is a couple things. December 4th was a notable date. December 4th, 2017, that's when the partial remains of Sydney were discovered. And more remains were discovered the next day on December 5th. So they learned she was dismembered. I mean, there were parts of her body scattered all over. 
in, in garbage bags. Specifically, there were 13 garbage bags, black garbage bags that were just scattered all around in, you know, around ditches and, and just various areas within Clay County, Nebraska. And then they learned that the cell phone of Bailey Boswell was used to, that was used to access her Tinder account under the name of Audrey. All right. She used the name Audrey during the afternoon of November 16th, 2017 was in that close pers- that proximity to the area where the remains were discovered. So again, I, I, t- I talk about this all the time. Phones are, are just, the technology is getting so good and police are able to really pinpoint precise locations where, uh, where bodies are located, where people were during a certain specific point in time in relation to evidence. And they're able to utilize all this in the courts. And we'll see, and I'll show you some of the pictures of some of that evidence as, as we do it. So this isn't very long. Again, a couple things that I wanted to point out though, um, as investigators are investigating this case, they, they did obtain security footage from Home Depot. This is where they see, and this is where the pre-planning really comes in. The, the police realized there was, there was pre-planning involved because on November 15th, which was, remember, you've got Sydney, she was at work, she left work on the evening of the 15th. Well, in the, on the morning of the 15th, you have, you have Bailey and Trail going to this Home Depot at about 10.35 in the morning. They're buying tools and supplies. Specifically, yeah, we're, we're talking about, you know, uh, and I've got a picture of some of these here. So you've got these these snips here. Uh, they're, they're buying those, they're buying a hacksaw. They're buying, you know, another thing that was interesting is they see Boswell go to another place and she buys this, and this isn't the exact one, this is just to show you a picture, but she buys this hand a hand cranked meat grinder. It's a it's a hand uh, manual meat grinder, and, and and so I pulled up a few pictures of this, and so it's just pretty odd and disturbing that she's that she's purchasing these items. So specifically, it says if it mentions it in there, I'll see if I can I can tell you, but uh, it, it's on the it's going to be in the other article that we have that I'll show you. But we we learned that Sydney was alive during this time. And they're purchasing all these items. They're pre-planning it. We learned later on that uh, it, it appears, ob- you know, Trail was, pot- you know, potentially involved in in this in this dark witchcraft, you know, satanic cults, what, what have you. I'm not sure exactly what he was he was into, but um, he there was talk of him wanting to to sacrifice someone and, and kill someone, on, you know, on a full moon and uh, to really. Uh, kill someone to get more power, to get more witch witchcraft power, and and, and you know I, I'm not going to go into full details on that. There's there's a lot with this case, but I just wanted to give you the synopsis of of what we've learned up to this point that led to these these uh, sentences that were that were that, that are going through the courts right now. So what we learned from there, the autopsy was done. They learned that that Sydney was strangled. She was actually strangled, and Aubrey. Aubrey Trail actually admitted, he acknowledged that he had strangled her to death with an extension cord. So this is all in the affidavit. And then he he goes on to say that Boswell assisted in cleaning up the crime scene and then disposing of Sydney's body. So that's really, um, it was a pretty short arrest affidavit, if you will. And then I'll go in and cover a couple more details from this article here, just to show you a few of the pictures here as we go through. So again, there's her reaction. This is Boswell's reaction to uh, to her sentence. And then as we go through, they, they got quite a few pictures here. This is Aubrey Trail getting, this was when he was actually uh, getting sentenced and he was sentenced last year. So they're still waiting to decide what, you know, what, uh, you know, his, his, his sentence hearing is going to be. And that's in December, but this is when he was wheeled in. And I'll just show this real quick here. And this was last year. The previous year, okay. So, as we go th- further through here, you've got Sydney here, really young, and and she was essentially lured to her death, and it was all planned as we as we found, and and this article goes on to talk about it. But I just wanted to show you a couple of the pictures as we go through. You got more of uh, Bailey Boswell here, and then you've got the judge involved. Okay, you've got the prosecution got the defense and then as we go through you'll see some of the the evidence and I'll point that out here and move that over there 
Okay, so you're going through. And I just want to give you a, more of a visual of it as we're going through. Just so you can see what, what's going on. So this trial was really recent for for Bailey Boswell. And, and so this was the the rented apartment right here that they were in in Nebraska. They were in the basement. There was a basement apartment. And then this was the, the landlord that testified about the bleach. If you remember the bleach that I mentioned, the the smell of bleach. I think there's a picture of the bleach too right down here. So they used a lot of bleach apparently. Uh, bleach tends to be used in a lot of these, these cover-up crimes. And it's just really interesting here. There's the apartment inside with the fans blowing. A lot of evidence entered in. A lot of evidence against them. And, and so there's another picture of that apartment. There's a picture of the two convicted, Aubrey, Bailey. And then uh, you've got Boswell crying. Don't know if, you know, don't know if these are fake tears, if, if these are manufactured tears and in trying to get a lighter sentence, if you will. I mean, she's looking at death at this point. So uh, this was really interesting here because this right here, this is Sydney Loof's arm. And this was the first body part discovered in one of those garbage bags. So uh, pretty, pretty crazy. And it's, it's interesting. Her tattoo says everything will be wonderful someday. If you're religious, you just hope that, that she's in a better place now. I mean, it's such a vicious murder. And, and it really, you know, the evidence was again, just, just so strong. And I'll show you a couple of the pictures if it shows it down here. Uh, they're talking about the cell phone pings and all the GPS data right here. Here's the receipt with purchases made at the at the uh, Home Depot, including a hacksaw, drop cloths. So, you know, a lot of evidence going against them. They weren't very smart, obviously, in, in trying to cover up this case. And there's the hacksaw there. I want to show you. So I really like this article. It just shows everything in, uh, in dealing with the, you know, in the, in the trial. They just kind of lay it out. So that's why I'm showing you this this information through this article. And then, you know, a couple more pictures of of the two. You know, they, they think that uh, Trail might be a, a psychopath. Um, you know, I'm sure he's he's been speaking with psychologists in the jail and 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 so forth. But what are your thoughts on that? Do you think do you think these two are are both psychopaths. Do you think uh, you know Trail was the mastermind and, and kind of uh, Boswell was led behind with in this case? Do you think? Oh, and by the way, if you if you go, you can type this in. You can go check out their. They made clips, these Facebook clips, while they were on the run. If you guys remember that, if you're not familiar with this case, you can type those in. They made clips of them basically trying to defend themselves while they were on the run. So I'd encourage you to go look at those as well. You could type those in and find those all over the place. And and it was just pretty interesting how they were being very defensive and, and really trying to defend them not being involved in this case. And then they were both later arrested. So it's interesting to see that after the fact. And then a couple other things. You know, not, I don't really need to show you much more about this. I just wanted to give you guys a good idea of, of the trial, the verdict, what we're looking at right now. And, and so we'll learn, I think, in December if, if she's going to, in fact, uh, be given the death penalty. Pretty, pretty crazy case there. So let me know your thoughts on this. And if you remember this case, this, again, is a few years old. Just wanted to kind of uh, bring this back to memory because it's, it's still ongoing as far as what we're learning on the outcome of that. Again, this is Dev with Crime Hive, and I'll be back with another video soon. Y'all take care.